That's hilarious. What are we even talking about? Thank you so much for coming on. Welcome to Community Cures. I appreciate your time today. This is going to be a really fun conversation. I've been I've been wanting to have it for a minute. Amazing. Thank you again uh, for having me. I'm really excited to get into it because I'm sure it's going to be a, an amazing and uh, pleasantly surprising conversation. So uh, I'll, I'll love to see where it goes. Me too. Me too. Um, for First off, can you introduce yourself, um, anything that we should know about you, kind of what you have going on before we dive in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what I do right now is uh, really centered around investing and personal finance. Um, so I invest in my own portfolio, but I also uh, help out people who are interested in starting out in terms of uh, investing. And I'm trying to do it in a way which is, you know, kind of a bit more contrarian to the common way of uh, people in the industry seem to do it very strictly rationally and very sometimes pretending to be like these wolf of wall street types and instead my focus is to kind of try to connect with people um on a on a deeper more emotional level that i feel that perhaps needs to be activated for them to sometimes because you know there are certain people that find it difficult to deal with numbers and money um like if you're an artist or a social worker or somebody who's never really touched this stuff. And, and so for me, it's important uh, that there is a way for those people to understand uh, that subject matter. And I think I feel for me, at least um, because of my kind of background into inner work, inner work and psychology and all these um, kind of work that I have done for myself, I, I have a unique approach to kind of connect with people like that and help them. Um, but my background has been in, in business and entrepreneurship. Um, I've had a fairly successful career where um, we we sold the business. I had a decent share of that. Um, so I, I, I made out with a decent chunk of money, but then the next, the next question was automatically, you know, what do I do with this? Because I don't want to lose it. I don't want to, like blow it in a car or, or just squander it. I want to be somebody who's building and growing uh, in every step. So that led me to the path to learn investing as much as I can. Um, and I've done it completely independently by myself. So I've never really had like advisors or anyone, any, anyone like that. And for me, that's one of my, um, let's say values is really when I, when I try to teach somebody about, investing i want them to be independent as much as they can um and yeah that that has been my focus i've been investing pretty like, as my main thing um since like 2018 that's mm -hmm. right around the time that we we sold our company um and other than that i kind of briefly mentioned there's this whole other side i would say of of the journey which is, you know, you, you reach a point where you um, have this dream outcome of selling a business and, and getting a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of associate that there should be a certain level of satisfaction or happiness, which comes from that. And then, well, yeah, it was there, but for, for after a while, you kind of realize, okay, what, what's next? And then the happiness kind of levels off. So you're really at a situation where most people would dream to be, but at the same time, there's still no really um, happiness and fulfillment and meaning as much as you thought there would be once you reach that point. And that kind of started another journey, which was with my own kind of inner work and going to these workshops. And uh, I'm lucky enough to have my mother who's a psychotherapist. So she was able to kind of kickstart my journey um, into looking a lot more inwards to try and understand you know where where is this coming from right you you i have so many blessings in my life and then this at the same time you know i'm not really feeling uh like i'm in the right place and i'm not really feeling that um fulfillment and so uh that led me down to during that period of like five years since i started investing i was in parallel also doing that 
um, through tough a tough relationship, uh, then also some personal failures, um, all these kind of challenges that arise. And thankfully, I, I learned a lot in my in that process about myself, about about my place in the world. I think also, and um, I briefly mentioned to you, I've also uh, done a bit of work with psychedelics. Um, I'm actually in a microdosing program right now as well. But my whole kind of idea is basically, I like I mentioned, I have a mother who's a therapist mm -hmm. and my, my father's background is more in entrepreneurship and business. So I'm kind of like a perfect mix between my parents. Um, and my kind of deepest interest is really exploring that relationship between um, business, entrepreneurship, but also spirituality and psychology and where those intersect uh, to be at the maximum service of humanity, basically. Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of should have been a TLDR, but it got kind of long. <laughs> oh, that's great. I feel like that's so valuable because, I mean, the topic of money in general can be daunting for a lot of people, as well as you know, even in spiritual communities, it, it seems to be, it's sometimes hard for people to make those two intersect as well because of all, you know, their history in, in their own money journey and stuff like that can feel the opposite of something that's, that's a, a beautiful, successful, um, light thing. It comes, it oftentimes comes with a lot of corruption and density. How do you, and that's why I was attracted to a lot of what you were putting out is you, the way that you talk about your finances is totally in alignment with like um, progressing and, and positivity and spirituality and, and all of these things. And it's like, it's one in the same. It's like, it's a tool to amplify kind of some of the things that you're moving towards. It doesn't have to be something that limits us or something that we should be pushing away or avoiding. Um, has that always been your mindset around that? Uh, no, no, it, it has evolved a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't really start uh, with those beliefs, I guess. I, I myself also had a ton of limiting beliefs around money. And, you know, I still do. I have to be honest. I'm not like completely uh, over it. Um, there are still things related to money that I struggle with. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a journey and it's, I've come a long way. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I do feel you about, you know, even people who are open about all sorts of difficult conversations and topics when it comes to, uh, somebody's deepest fears or, uh, or regrets or, um, however it might manifest in, in say a spiritual community or whatever, mm -hmm. but uh, there's always this like kind of shadow and darkness that follows this topic of money because there's always this shadow of you know exploitation or or taking advantage of others um there's so many negative uh, associations and, and and beliefs when it comes to that topic and um it's i think it's very important and it's very powerful when you manage to transform um, somebody's ideas and beliefs about money, because it, it's, it's like you said, it's a tool that can enable them to basically manifest their, their best and highest self in the world. Um, unfortunately, we kind of live in a world where money is a, is a fact of life. You know, there's often occasions where I wished, you know, money didn't exist, but that's the reality that we live in. Um, I, I've, I've also kind of combated my own thoughts of, you know, what if I just quit and go be a monk somewhere for a while? Um, but yeah, we, we, we can't really, well, you can do that, but temporarily, I mean, reality, our modern reality is very much intertwined with money. And I feel that it's very important for people to at least have a neutral relationship um, with it, mm -hmm. um, because otherwise, if if you, if you have a negative one, then it automatically leads you into a downward spiral, um, not just financially, but also potentially in your relationships and many other things, because everything is connected.
right? So if there is one kind of place in your mind or your spirit or your soul, which is uh, ill in some regard, then it reflects uh, in your whole life uh, mm -hmm. to some extent. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I started making that connection and I didn't even realize that I was kind of assigning a negative or limiting belief towards money. I just had it like so I wasn't necessarily I feel like a lot of people aren't educated on even how to navigate their own financial world. And so I think that you're what you're offering, you know, your own history, experience and and truth around that is really a valuable service to the community because yeah, a lot of people need to hear a different side of the game, <laughs> the money game, because it's been, for me at least, it took a long time for me to change my mindset into one of positivity. Not necessarily that it was like negative the whole time, but it took me a while to like really start to like want to play in that and, and really do it in a positive way. And 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 uh, where would you, I guess, where would you recommend um, someone that's in that mindset start? to even like shift their mindset around money to get to a positive place? Yeah, I think the biggest problem is um, kind of equating your worth with what you make. So mm -hmm. a lot of people believe that, you know, I make this amount or I earn this much, then that in some extent means that this is how I'm, how much I am worth as a human being, uh, which is, is really, not the right way to think about it, obviously, but it, it leads you down a very bad path. And I think um, the important kind of first step is uh, for you to do the work to realize that you you as a human being don't have a monetary value. And you, like, mm -hmm. it sounds cheesy, but you're priceless, right? That's kind of the whole thing. But um, so the next step then becomes okay uh, if i'm fine with myself and with my place in the world so kind of accepting yourself as you are then it really becomes i think the powerful transformation is when you start to look at money as as more of a game so in, in the grand scheme of things like it's 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 completely made up right money is kind of a uh, manifestation of our uh, of our mind right so it's not really something that's very grounded in reality it's 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 um, something that we have collectively agreed upon mm -hmm. and and decided that it rules the world but essentially it's 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 still a game to an extent and if you approach it more playfully so if you're investing in a business or if you're starting a new job you're basically conducting an experiment, right? So even if it fails, um, that doesn't mean you suck and you're worthless. It means uh, your experiment failed, right? So you can try another one or, or try a different game. Um, so each and every step of that journey, I think it's, it's important to set some distance between how you kind of see and evaluate yourself versus your work because uh even until recently myself i i had what i would consider a failure and it was kind of difficult to create some distance between that because well it in the grand scheme of things it doesn't it's it's ir irrelevant really i what matters is i just keep going and i keep playing the game and i keep iterating and i try to make it as fun and as engaging and as entertaining as I can for myself, because um, energetically, at least for me, uh, where I've noticed the biggest kind of uh, issue is when I approach, let's say I'm starting a business or something, a new product. When I approach that whole journey or process from a place of lack, so meaning I'm in a way trying to make this successful to prove that I'm worthy of, of love or worthy of respect or worthy of something. Um, and if I approach this whole endeavor with that energy, it automatically uh, leads to bad places. 
Um, and I think that's that's the energy most of us start with when it comes to anything related with money. Um, and instead, kind of the approach that I'm trying to take is how do I make this as much akin to a small child playing a game? You know, when you watch children playing games, it's about, you know, they're having so much fun. There's enthusiasm, there's curiosity, there's um, a desire to understand, a desire to keep learning. There's this very uh, intense kind of positive energy about it. Mm -hmm. uh, intense like curiosity and, and intense um, motivation to kind of keep going because it's fun. Um, and that's kind of the subtle switch that I myself am, am trying to make because um, in the previous endeavors that I br briefly mentioned, you know, I have started uh, two businesses before which failed for this exact same reason because I was approaching uh, this whole subject from a place of, um, you know, I need to prove that I'm good enough. And it, it, it wasn't working. And now that I've kind of, well, I'm still in the process of switching. I'm not quite there yet, but I think it's, it's working a lot better. Uh, and, you know, seeing X and the personal brand kind of journey with, as a, as a, as a game mm -hmm. has really, I think, transformed, uh, first of all, the enjoyment that I get out of it, but also the results and the, the people that I connect with, like yourself and many others, I think that kind of energy that it carries, you can feel that through the content and through the through the messages that you put out. And um, I think that's the main reason why it's it's, I'm starting to see something really shift in terms of uh, how I approach work and I'm very excited for it like the momentum that you're feeling yeah absolutely yeah you know I you're that same approach you're talking about I kind of had with this uh, podcast and having conversations with people um, the more I approached it with like a worry of coming off a certain way or saying the right things or any of that stuff the more it didn't go my way <laughs> And then the more I just kind of let go of that and just, you know, sit down with you and have a, just a, this conversation in the moment right now and let it unfold how it does, the more and more of those conversations start to go, you know, I start to feel what you're talking about, that momentum, and I start to feel things really moving. So that approach, even towards money or anything of it, just being a game and experiment, like, I don't have an outcome for it necessarily i mean there might be goals but it doesn't mean that if something has to pivot that i'm a failure you know it just means that something is changing and i can kind of ride that into the next chapter right um what might you say to someone though whose physical reality um is very limited by their financial state because i feel like that you know what we're talking about sounds I absolutely believe it, of course. Um, I've I've seen that. But for someone whose physical physical reality might be very in demand of their financial state needing to change and their focus is, is only on the resources needed to stay alive, it's very um, desperate almost. Telling Telling someone like that this mindset shift might need to occur way down the road what might be an initial sliver of hope in that reality and, and, and in order to kind of break those barriers that are uh, very real and tangible in those in that situation, if that makes sense. Hopefully that wasn't too long winded of a question. I, I mean, I completely realize that uh, this all sounds very like woo woo for somebody who's really in a in a desperate situation. Um, I think like the first the absolute first step would be um, coming coming to terms with it, I guess you know this is this is my current situation now uh, I've got myself in it because of X and Y whatever that might be um, but this is not who I am or who I picture myself to be this is not the life that I want for myself and so 
it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult and it's gonna be shit. But what is the maximum lever that I can use to get myself out of this situation? So does that mean getting out of debt? Does that mean getting a second job? Does that mean what what's the what's the clearest route that you can see, no matter how uh, difficult it might be? Um, because these things, when it comes to money and success, these things also have momentum. Like you said, if you are if you are going down in a downward spiral, as I referred to, then that thing has energy and momentum as well. So it's going to take a bit more effort to kind of reverse the the direction. And I think that's maybe the the most the biggest reason why people kind of stay in in such a situation because they know it's going to take a lot of work to mm -hmm. to get your head above water but but the, but the reality is do you do you really have a choice i mean um you either do whatever it takes or you're stuck there forever so can you accept that mm -hmm. um and it's and I, I know it's very easy for me to say, but you know, I, I've too been in difficult situations. It's not not that difficult, obviously, as uh, you know, struggling to make ends meet, thankfully. But every time I found myself in a place where I felt horrible and didn't, I didn't want to be there, I knew it was my decisions that have kind of led me there um and it's kind of accepting responsibility for that okay i did this for example in my relationship previous relationship it, was, it got to a toxic place and i was like okay i did this i got here i should have left earlier mm -hmm. so that's fine i accept that responsibility that's why i'm here but it's also not how i want to live my life for the future so what what do I need to do um, to to move to a more positive place? And in my case, obviously, it's you know ending the, the relationship uh, and kind of not allowing myself to you know look back. I think I think the first step is uh, all I, I, like I said, taking accountability that you know your decisions led to that outcome, but you you can choose not to be defined by those decisions um, because in any moment you can take better decisions. Like, uh, yes, I'm in a bad place because I made some bad calls, but that doesn't mean that I as a whole, as a person, am bad or I'm doomed to this outcome because I can choose uh, to be better and to do better. Mm -hmm. And... Of course, it very much depends on uh, situation to situation uh, because everyone everyone's kind of struggles are different. Um, but I think at least for me is, you know, taking accountability and then realizing that uh, you're you're not your situation. You can you can choose to um, strive to something better and something bigger mm -hmm. and kind of start working towards that you know find what's what's the biggest lever that you can use to improve to improve your situation as much as possible and you said something that i want to highlight too it's it's about the situation and where you're at not being permanent right like who you are it's a lot of the times i think it's just we're used to this version of ourself whether it's been spiraled so far down that we just kind of live in that reality. It, it, you said something, I can't remember exactly the words you used, but basically it's like the, the, that environment and who you are right then doesn't have to be permanent. It's not going to be permanent, but to get out of that, your mindset, the mindset shifts with defining yourself in your mind a little differently than before, maybe feeling a little bit more abundant, right? Can do wonders. It's just not defining yourself as someone that's in that situation necessarily. And then you can kind of climb a, climb a little bit out of that, 
by taking action and by keeping your mindset on a higher version of who you're striving to be um, financially. And, and this is applicable in other areas, but as of right now, we're talking about that. And so really starting to see yourself as a different version. What does that look like? What does that feel like? What, what, how do you live? Is it, is it, is it aligned and matched with where you're at today or what steps do you need to take? And that can kind of help define our goals. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is a, this is a process for me too. I mean, I'm not coming from a place where I'm preaching it as, as, as a teacher, because I'm, I'm also doing it myself. You know, this is, I'm just sharing my own learning. Mm -hmm. um, but I think when you're, when you've lived a very difficult life and difficulty is all you know, um, it becomes kind of ingrained and, and associated with your, with your self identity. So if this is, if the bad life is the only thing, you know, then you, you automatically kind of adopt that identity of the person having that life. Um, and so that's self-reinforcing, right? That means that automatically, if you believe that's your identity, you're still going to take action that um, is gonna, again, put you in that situation. And so the difficult question is when you, when you don't know what the other side looks like, what do you do? Um, and, and this is the difficult part, obviously, but I think everyone has that little something in their life. It might be a person, it might be an activity, it might be something which just feels positive. It feels good. It feels pleasant. It feels, uh, you know, maybe holy if, if, if that, that's how you want to look at it. It's that little spark, little piece of light. If you're, if you have a really dark and difficult life, there is something somewhere that's like a little spark of light, uh, which is the, the positivity in your life. So then you have to make the decision to walk in that direction, which means you don't know what, what that life, that ideal life that you're, you're, you're going for might look like, but you'll never really find out unless you go towards that, uh, that positive kind of place in your, in your life. Um, so if, if it's, if it's certain people or a certain community or, or a certain activity or something that makes you light up and, uh, makes you feel like a better person, then you should, um, go in that direction as much as you can, because that's then gonna leave you, I think, um, towards a place where you can expand that life into your life, into your life. Um, especially, uh, yeah, especially if everything else is not going your way, focusing on that would make the most sense, right? It's like, if you enjoy playing music, and the rest of your life is absolute, is, is just dragging you down, then the more time that you can dedicate to playing music, as an example to what you're saying, would bring more time that you actually are in that light or that you're feeling better than than that and, and it's going to guide you into a better direction what that looks like i don't know but it's going to be better yeah yeah because with 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 that with you getting to know that like positive light side of you through the music for example mm -hmm. you're you're also there there is this spillover effect that's going to happen uh, where you're going to find that same feeling in different activities mm. or you're going to find that you have maybe uh, you can feel it even more uh, than you than you used to. So it's kind of like slowly taking over your life where it's a process that can like allow for complete transformation. And I can I can give you an example with uh, myself. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I came back talking to that relationship, maybe it's an easier one. Um, I had like a cycle of really um, relationships that weren't going anywhere. So really, uh, they even got toxic from time to time. So my question was, what 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 am I doing? 
what's what's the issue here why am i like getting to this point in every relationship where i'm not it's not moving forward it's not being a loving caring kind of environment for both of us um and so when i started asking that question i slowly came to the realization that um i i don't really know exactly i didn't really know what love felt like as a feeling which which is weird because all of us should know it but like it's, i couldn't really define it uh, and instead when i was approaching these relationships i was getting attached through maybe trauma or 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 this adrenaline from having kind of a slightly toxic relationship mm -hmm. and so i was kind of mistaking that those intense feelings for love and it's really none nothing like that and so through observing kind of how my family interacted and especially on my father's side i i saw very clearly that these people had like an intense love for each other but they have no idea how to express it um and so that idea kind of popped into my head is like okay i i probably didn't know how to live in love and how to express love and how to find it what what does it look like um and so i started focusing very slowly into trying to to find what 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 love looks like and feels like for me and so being with the right people who made me feel understood or made me feel of a, as part of a community or um I had a lot in common with or are doing something I I enjoy and slowly kind of growing that little spark of love into as big as I can so it you know can take a big space in my life um because it was also an issue where I I wanted my goal was to do something I love mm -hmm. and to do it with passion but if I don't know what, what that looks like, how am I going to find it? Um, and so my issue was not really with the work or the professional setting. It was more about how I was approaching it. Uh, and and yeah, thankfully, it's it's been growing very, very nicely. That's wonderful. Where did you where did you resort to your community or where did you find that that aspect that opened up your world a little bit more to find what you're talking about? Like, where was your community at that point? Um, yeah, at that point, I was these um, psych psychotherapy kind of workshops cool. that I took part in. Uh, obviously, they had like a specific topic that I was focused on, like relationships or whatever, uh, or, or uh, even money. And so going there, there's a lot of, you meet a lot of like-minded people who are also struggling with the same things. And there is a, there is a bond there that happens on a deeper level, which I think we're, we're not used to in our regular life because you meet somebody and it takes a while to get to know a deeper side of them. Mm -hmm. uh, while when you go to one of these like th more therapeutic events, um, it, it's funny how it works sometimes the other way around where you know somebody is like deepest, darkest fears and, and desires and uh, um, and what moves him and then you don't know basic things about him. But it really, I think, creates uh, friendships and relationships which are um, very, very strong and very very valuable too um so i think if you again it's it's difficult for somebody to feel at ease with that if they don't know that feeling because you know obviously kind of revealing your 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 fears and your kind of deep feelings to somebody who you don't know can feel very scary mm -hmm. but at the same time, um, that's the risk that you really have to take in order to find like your tribe or the people that you really can connect with. Um, because once you 
let's say you reveal um, to somebody something that troubles you, you know, the way that person responds to that or yeah, the way, the way that he responds to that can tell you a lot about him and his state of mind. So if somebody's very welcoming to, um, to something that you have to share, if there's a lot of like loving and nice energy, then obviously that's somebody you would want to be around. Uh, and that's when you find people like that in a community like that, then it's a it's a direction we all want to go towards. And it starts giving you a deeper con context for what those feelings are. If you have no context for it, or back to like what you're saying about even money, it's like, well, I don't have, that's never been my experience. So I have no context for it, but getting closer and closer to that starts to kind of open up the, open up your horizons a little bit in terms of love or those feelings or, you know, a more abundant life. And it, it, it's, it's that process of opening that you really want um, with money and with everything else. Um, but obviously we, we were talking about money, but for, for some people, like seemingly unrelated things in your psyche that you're dealing with can have a tremendous impact on your ability to make money. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have, let's say, a deep-seated fear of something, or um, I don't know, you, you have little self-respect and self-love, um, these are things which can tremendously like hinder you when it comes to your relationship with money and your earning potential. Um, so people are often very focused on solving their money issues directly with what with work and and technical skills and knowledge, which is fine. But sometimes, for some people, really like taking care of yourself in a different way can manifest into you. Um, earning a lot more than 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 you would have expected, and that's that's the funny way that life works in that respect. Because yeah. you think it's it's this particular thing limiting you from uh, earning more or making more, and it and then instead it turns out that maybe something that happened with your relationship with your mother or your father is actually. Uh, influencing your subconscious in a way that's blocking you from going where you want to be yeah like a mental block of not wanting to be seen or a fear of having the responsibility like you said when when with your business it was like all of a sudden you had access to something that wasn't previously there and you're like well now what right and a lot of people don't even know what to do with the idea of and now what and so it's like a mental block of like i'm not even going to go there right and they don't even realize that they are, they don't want power. They don't want to be seen. They don't want maybe the responsibility or it could be any, it could be anything, but yeah. It's a, so really getting to the root of where that mental block is could start your trajectory onward. And then you can do some more of the tangible, tangible, um, action-based, uh, goal, goal, goal oriented things, but the mental block's gone now. Exactly. Yeah. And, and for most people, I've noticed it's it's really um, like, obviously, it's complex. And obviously, there's a lot of issues that somebody might have. But mm -hmm. usually, there's one bottleneck somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and like you said, it might be your ability to take responsibility. It might your might be your fear of get it, of being seen. And these are all things that you're going to need to do if you want to grow your grow your income or start a business. Mm -hmm. um, because if you're not able to, then you're really not going to have, you know, uh, people get paid more for more responsibility, more than they do for, you know, their hour of work, mm -hmm. like so, so for, for their time. So if you really want to get into a higher income bracket, then you need to start thinking, how can I be paid for the, um, the mind work, right? The responsibility that I have towards something instead of my time. Um, but for you to make that switch, you you need to, like you said, be open to taking responsibility. And when you when you find that kind of bottleneck, wherever that might be for you, 
then if you work towards solving it, then there's this uncorking effect that happens where you're kind of, you remove that bottleneck and now there's this phase of explosive growth in terms of not only your your income, but also your quality of life, your 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 happiness levels, your relationships, whatever. And that that's really where you wanna be because there's always gonna be something to work on. I mean, there's always gonna be some sort of a bottleneck or something stopping you on this level. And the moment you kind of breach through that ceiling is the moment you kind of explosively grow until the next kind of uh, problem or uh, ceiling. Because then there's something else to break through. Yeah, I, it's probably a never ending th process and you just get to new, new phases yeah. of it, yeah. So if you're expecting to reach a place where you're um, you're going to stop growing, then <laughs> well, it's not really <laughs> how it works. <laughs> right. Um, so there's, there's always layers to it. There's always more levels to the game. There's always more uh, problems, more issues, more things to solve, more things to experience. Um, it's just a matter of, I guess, uh, having the the willingness and the kind of desire to keep going to mm -hmm. to see what's on the next level right so this comes back to what i was mentioning as kind of seeing it as a game as a as a thing that you're playing around with because there's this these challenges and 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 these levels of growth so you're always gonna want to find what okay what's next what's the what's the next kind of exciting step um yeah. and yeah that's that's kind of been my philosophy at least in terms okay so this brings up something i wanted to ask you because in terms of your the intersection of um investing finance and also spirituality this is perfect because i feel like a lot of spiritually inclined uh, people their mental block may be and i'm just putting words in and i'm just i've i've seen this play out before and so their mental block may be the fear of the you know corruption and greed that comes along with you know the industries or you know getting to a certain point in the money game um where would we begin that kind of that kind of conversation because i feel like that is pretty common probably and so instead of doing a bigger amount of good with the resources that they could have given that the, that mental block no longer is there and that effect that you're talking about gets them to a new place because how I see it, the more resource that you have and the more good you want to do, then then you need those resources to access that that level of good and that phase of good that you're going to be able to, to accomplish in this world. And also that's going to impact more people in a positive way. And so by keeping ourselves in that mental block and limiting ourselves, we're limiting the amount of change we could, we could do and the amount of... Uh, positive impact that we could really ignite on this planet and the more i how i see it the more people that have that mindset then the the world just changes and the more good is done um however that is a reality that exists when we're talking about the money game right uh these there's certain yeah. levels up there that i think that's a fear block possibly uh where where, where do you think we could take that conversation yeah i think that's kind of like one of my biggest um pain points let's say because i think um a lot of these people which are more spiritually inclined which i very much relate to um first of all i'm not gonna deny that money and power and these bad things are happening out there in the world uh yes that's true these things that are happening are, not, are happening and i think while it's very easy for us to attribute it towards money in general, um, that that would be kind of incorrect because really, uh, like we talked about previously, it's money is a tool. It's just the the way to manifest into reality. Mm -hmm. And so, what these kind of bad people, let's say, are are manifesting in, into reality is a reflection of their own inner world. So. All of these um, like terrible things that are happening is because um, I think good people are staying away from 
trying to make a positive impact because like you said they're either afraid that it's going to paint them in a bad way because now they're they're looking towards making more money and uh, as a as a consequence trying to have a more positive impact on more people right um so i think the block there is obviously first of all money is bad and and people who strive for money are also bad um but there's also a second kind of aspect which is maybe more hidden which is people who are um more spiritually inclined i think there's there's also an identity there right because uh you don't want to risk if you have a community of friends or people who think the same way you don't want to risk kind of associating your your yourself or or your your identity with something that we collectively view as as not good which is money mm. um so there are there are two risks there right first first of all it's the personal kind of moral dilemma and then there's also the community risk which is being kind of ousted from your community because you're somebody who's interested in in making more money and that's a bad thing quote quote unquote um but i think my my view is that we we kind of have a responsibility let's say um as as people who are doing this this sort of work and we're uh, we're trying to do as much good as we can is is uh if you're not kind of in that field and if you're not trying to amplify be be a force for good then you're then you're leaving all the uh, the capital and all the resources for everyone else who's going to do you know bad stuff with it um and i think there's also the association that how should i put it mm. again there is this sort of switch that you can do similar to what we talked about before uh when it comes to your thought process about money is um it's it's a it's a tool it's a resource to help you build and create whatever you see into reality and if that's if if you're aiming for positive impact it, it's it's just going to reflect out what's inside of you. Yeah, if you want to see the world a more beautiful place, then money will be an extension and a resource, and, and it will be on your side. You, the way you use it and handle it, if you imagine a more beautiful world, that will be on your side, right? Right. It, it's Fundamentally, it's a neutral force. Mm. How like the qualities that we associate to it usually are not those are qualities of the people using it uh okay. not 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 the medium itself mm -hmm. so like you can use a hammer to build something uh to make a nice table to build a home or you can use it to kill somebody mm -hmm right that that doesn't tell you anything about the nature of the hammer that it's good or bad because it can be used for 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 good things and for bad things and i think money is much the same so um it, it's just a force for you to kind of amplify the impact that you can have on the world and if 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 your beliefs and your kind of morals and principles are about, you know, independence and honesty and love and community and uh, all these great things, then why wouldn't you want to amplify that as much as you can? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's, that's how I, I see it. No, I love that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's really good. Um, where does, where does your uh, current journey take you, do you think? Um, I saw you have something called the Wealth Journal. Is that your newsletter? Yeah, yeah. Th that's um, 
that's just the place where I send these weekly newsletters. And it's basically a lot of that is on topics that we're talking about right now. So as I'm going about in my life, there's situations and things that are arising certain uh, thoughts or insight that um, I share there in, in the in the newsletter. And it's always about, you know, these these psychological uh, issues or maybe it's something related to uh, investing or, or uh, personal finance. Um, but also it relates actually very much to what we were just talking. Um, you know, people who are more spiritually inclined or more artistic or more, I don't know, you know, there's this left versus right brain. I'm not sure which one was the more rational, which one was the more... Uh, yeah artistic side yeah for people who are more creatively brained i think there there's an obvious like need and 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 they need to be they need to understand these kind of technical skills and uh, uh knowledge about money and how it works and and personal finance and all of that to kind of focus their energy so that they can save or invest or, or earn more or whatever they want to do uh, while with people who are uh, on the rational brain side who are very analytical and very um, structured then comes the other kind of uh, perspective is when when they perhaps need to take a look inward and understand a bit more about the intricacies of of their own kind of inner world and how that is impacting um their potential. Mm -hmm. So those are all like topics that I'm I'm covering in that newsletter. And um depending on who you are, I think you'll find different nuggets of kind of interesting <laughs> information. That's cool because it appeals to a larger audience than just catering to, you know, uh the interest of one side of the coin. It's like you kind of blend it all together which i really appreciate in your in your writing which i'm sure you're writing on on x's little nuggets from the yeah, newsletter yeah right? exactly yeah yeah because because some of the um kind of issues that i'm seeing when it comes to um this area of financial knowledge is that there's a, a lot of these like kind of wall street bros Mm -hmm. <laughs> which think they're still in the wolf of wall street or something um, <laughs> and, there, and there's this you know type of energy uh which you know uh keeps people away good people away um and i personally don't believe you know finance and money is necessarily about those things uh it's just kind of like the culture in a lot of places but I'm trying to communicate it in a more uh, down to earth and kind of personal way that can resonate to, to more people. Um, and there's also, like I said, the other side of the coin, whereas a lot of people who are uh, like my mother or some of my friends who are very incredibly mindful of uh, their inner world. That's something they've been doing uh, for a lot of time. They, they know themselves very aware. They're, they're very self-aware. They're very spiritual. Uh, there's this very creative side of them. But at the same same time, they don't know how to uh, kind of use that and, and add on top some of the technical skills and the understanding about the financial space to kind of help them, uh, like I said before, you know, invest and, and just be better in their finances so that they can amplify their impact in the world. Um, so those are kind of like the two areas where I'm working with. For, for one, I'm trying to get those uh, finance pros to kind of take a deeper look inside themselves and, and see uh, some of the psychological issues that they might have. And on the other side, it's people who are already very self-aware. It's kind of just giving them some more skills that they can use in, in their life. Because those are, yeah, those are the people that you want to be in those in those positions that can amplify their their realities and and really do a lot of good with that money. That's cool though, because you've taken so you've taken the side of your your dad, you said as as that business side, and then your mom, and you are kind of speaking to that demographic through through your work in a sense, right? Like you have deep experience in 
both worlds, it seems. And now you're kind of integrating that in your world and then diversifying that to to what you're doing and the work you're doing, which I, I find to be really useful, valuable and and interesting as well. Yeah, I'm 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 constantly striving for for balance, right? There there's a lot of things in in each of us which want to find some form of expression. And um so so for me, I carry both of those sides, so the business side and the um psychological side and I have different, you know, cycles and phases where I, I indulge one more than the other, but obviously I'm just trying to find the the balance and trying to help more people as well find their own balance because uh, I, I I I really believe that's the the way to a more you know meaningful and fulfilling life and and just I think that's the way for me to to amplify myself and my positive impact. Yeah, you kind of have found your place your place in your world right now. Yeah. And uh, of course that that's a place that I'm, I very much enjoy. And it looks like this right now, but you know, I'm open for evolution as well. It's, it might change after a while. It might, I might decide, okay, you know, I want to go all in um, inside the inner work and psychology, a psychology side. So um, yeah. I'm always open for, to keep growing and to keep evolving. Yeah, I, I wonder if we'll see a version of, of you in the caves uh, as a monk sometime. <laughs> you never know. I, I have a feeling, you know, that that might come at some point. Yeah. Do you speaking of do you have any um, daily practices that you could can share or is that part of your life? Do you have? Um, yeah. Did you were you did you did you grow up religious? Um, what kind of like what kind of background do you have as far as you know the more spiritual side of the conversation? Um, yeah, um, I, I I'm from Bulgaria, which is in Eastern Europe, and we have uh, here is Orthodox Christianity. So uh, it's a bit a bit different than Catholicism um, or Protestantism, uh, but. I, I wasn't really raised religious, even though uh, a lot of my grandparents were quite religious. My uh, grandmother was taking us to church pretty regularly. Um, so that was something I was at least a little bit exposed to, but I was never kind of forced into that um, way of thinking, um, which which I'm, I'm very thankful for because it allowed me to kind of explore it for myself. And... It's interesting how that evolution of me uh, has been where, you know, I, I started off as a young kind of teenager or uh, um, somebody in their late teens, very identifying as very atheistic. I think most uh, people at that age maybe uh, are the same. And then once you kind of go through life, you wisen up, you... Uh, uh, hit some challenges, then you start to kind of discover a bit more of that mm -hmm. spiritual side. And for me, it's been very. I I'm I'm still finding my way to it, I guess, uh, because I, I'm kind of finding my own way of communicating with with the holy or with God or with the universe or however you might call it, and I'm using all sorts of uh, spiritual teachings or, or methodologies or um, ways in, we, in which I can connect with that. Where are your current inter interests? Like, um, yeah, currently, what kind of pieces of the puzzle uh, are attractive to you, like different books or teachers or any of that stuff? Um, yeah. Um, Actually, I have a book right next to me here. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, uh, the Bhagavad Gita. It's an Indian uh, kind of spirituality book. Uh, I have that same. I have that same copy. <laughs> really? Yeah. It, it's 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 an amazing book. I'm I'm nearly kind of finished it, um, and I I've really thoroughly kind of enjoyed it. But 
it's I'm allowing myself, let's say, to be guided to these things because it's funny how a certain book or something might come into my life uh, as if by chance at some certain point in my life. So I I do take note and I kind of read these things as as I stumble upon them. Mm-hmm. Um, so there there is not really any specific kind of teaching or methodology I I, I follow. This is kind of um one of my issues is that that I have a very wide field of interest um in anything and with with uh, spirituality as well you know you start with indian teachings i have uh, next to me a, a a christian icon i have a uh a hawaiian cup that i was here in hawaii um i have psychedelics i have shamanism you know mm-hmm. and all, all kinds of teachings and I'm always finding something useful there um, at certain points in, in my life. So yeah, that's beautiful, though. I love I love the idea of being inspired by whatever does it for you. Right. And and that's part of like my message here with some of this stuff, too, is like being able to witness other people's versions of, of this and, and t- get, taking different pieces of the puzzle and where are we feeling inspired and, and how can we share that with other people? And it's, it's also, it's all part of the whole thing, but it's so unique that everyone kind of has their own version of it. And I love to witness that and, and learn from people. So I, I feel you on that. I, I take books from all over the place or listen to, you know, people tell their stories from all over the world. And I like to see what feels where I'm pulled, what direction I'm pulled in, right? And then I kind of just follow that, and and it's it's fun, man. What what are you uh, kind of reading right now, or what are you interested in at the moment? Yeah, um, for the for a really long time, I I was really attracted to Eastern thought, and so I did read a lot of the Bhagavad Gita and the Dhammapada, and and but lately I've I've kind of found like a different approach to like. So I, I was raised more in the more of like a Christian kind of background, but lately I found kind of a different view into it that I'm intrigued by. And so I'm kind of learning to look at that in a, in a new light possibly. But, you know, I, I just am so uh, attracted to myths and symbolism and, and parables and, and stories. And so, you know, the fact that we're a collective of human beings that have all of that in no matter where we're from, you know, I want to, I kind of want to know about it all. I kind of want to like hear the stories that come from each of them. That's something that I'm really, really, uh, I feel like I will pursue in my life because it's very fun to me. Yeah. I think, I think, um, all of these kind of different teachings and religions is really different manifestations of the same thing. Uh, mm-hmm. so the, let's say the universal energy or God or, or however you want to call it, it's just a, for me, at least it's just a different interpretation or a different language used to describe the same thing. So it's always very interesting to me when, like you said, you meet somebody, uh, who's maybe, uh, focused at a particular, uh, area of worship or work. And, and it's interesting to learn about um their kind of perspective on that thing so uh yeah it just feels to me like collecting all this knowledge from different very different seemingly uh, teachings is allowing me to know more from from god in a way i don't know if that's Mm -hmm. weird because it's 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 showing me a different perspective. Yeah, I like to see where they where they where there's similarities and where they all intersect yeah. because you know, it definitely is something that has caused a lot of division and it's because we're not open to seeing the similarities and and seeing where they intersect. We're more interested in being right and we're more interested in like defending my story and defending my narrative. And it's like, I'm not interested in that. I'm, I'm interested to see where our narratives intersect and, and also where the difference is, where I can learn from, you know, like even where I can't find similarities, 
those differences, I want to learn from them. I don't want to, to you know, divide and, and defend more. I want to come together as, as much as we can within our differences and within learning from each other. That's, that's way more interesting to me. Yeah, and there's also this thing where if I can respectfully disagree with you on something, Mm -hmm. And we can still be friends and we can still like communicate normally, then at least for me, that's going to really raise my level of respect and love that I have towards you. Because um, I think most people kind of pos don't possess that ability to to be able to, yeah, just respectfully disagree on something and still still care and love the other person as, as much as they uh, they initially did. Right, uh, right. And I think that's also a, maybe a higher level of, I don't know, openness or, or, or relating to each other because there's there's never going to be things that we're 100% aligned on. But uh, if we can manage, you know, conflict and disagreement better, then it's going to be so much more positive for all of us. Yeah. And I think it starts with like being willing to truly listen. I think I think a lot of the time we are you know, through more conversation, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting better and better at, at trying to listen and paying attention to when I'm not like when I'm trying to respond to what, what is being said, but then it's the more and more I take a step back from that and just listen, the more I ha feel like I can actually respond in an honest way versus like trying to like defend some story or trying to like say the right words. It's like, I think it starts with listening. You know, we have to have these conversations, especially the difficult ones, with an approach of of honest and open listening, because a lot of the time I think it is just to be right. <laughs> you know, like we're talking about just being right with uh, my opinion, uh, whether that's you know religion or politics or whatever opinion that could be, whatever perspective. We're trying to make sure that we have the you know we win or something like we're 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 the we're the right in this in this debate and it's like i'm no nah, like it's way better and and way i don't know i progress a lot more when i can just have a conversation um honestly and open and let it kind of flow wherever it does but like i don't have to agree with everything that's being said and i shouldn't like you said you know we're so different and there's so many aspects of all of us and so we want to be different. We don't want to all be the same, but we, we can still come together and have beautiful conversations and learn from each other, regardless of that, you know? Absolutely. And um, yeah, and I, I'm somebody who I, en I, I enjoy some conflict and some mm -hmm. kind of headbutting because I think that's where, you know, truth can arise. Um, and that's how solutions can be found. Um, so for me, it's 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 troubling when when that element of kind of mutual respect and love is is missing uh, when you have a conflict with somebody. Because um, I I truly believe that kind of I'm I'm an advocate for truth and honesty. Mm -hmm. And if and if some some disagreement can help bring that out, and we can still kind of have the respect that we uh had for each other then everybody wins you know we, we we learned something new and we we still like each other the same way and you know there now there's more to this relationship um yeah. but more people kind of shy away from that uh conflict either avoid it entirely on or when they kind of get into it, get into it then there's you know hurt feelings and and uh, uh these issues that come up so mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that that's also a skill, I think, which takes takes some learning is to to separate separate, I guess, some of those ideas or thoughts that you might have about something from from your identity and from the identity of, of your the person sitting uh, in front of you. Yeah, you also brought up a good point. Um, conflict it doesn't have to be a bad thing. I mean, a lot of the times when we are presented with uh, some some sort of conflict, you know, it's a matter of being willing to be wrong too. Because if I'm challenged in a way, then yeah, if I'm challenged in a way, I could be proven wrong, and and that's a time that's a an opportunity to grow and to learn, not 
not, you know, like we have to be open to being wrong when, when we're challenged with those things. Yeah. So it's like, it's a great thing to feel that challenge and conflict. And if you have the loving element between, between each other, then you can get to a productive place with that conversation, you know? Right. But only, only if you are, um, kind of okay with being wrong because mm. for, for more, most people, that's kind of a connection with their ego, I guess. So mm. they can't really afford to be wrong because they're like losing face in their mind or something. Um, and I'm, I'm really attracted to, towards people who are very, very easily and freely admit that they're wrong. And that's something I, I've also tried to do myself is if, if I don't know, I'll say, I don't know. Or, or if I, if I'm wrong, you know, I, I try to be as quick as possible to admit it because I think it helps facilitate a better, um, better relationships, uh, especially if the other person on the other side can receive it. Uh, but even if he can't, you know, it's kind of my, at least for me, in my view, my responsibility to, to do the right thing and just say, you know, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. So, yeah, um, it, it's, again, something that comes back to your, your level of self-awareness and self-acceptance. Um, because if, if you don't have a secure place of kind of loving, loving you as you are, then you're not really that free to admit that you're wrong, I guess, because that means you automatically think less of yourself somehow mm -hmm. because, because uh, you didn't know enough, let's say. Um, so, I, yeah, I just generally think that it's important for people to focus as much as, you, uh, as, much as they can on having a good relationship with themselves and living in self-respect and self-love is because everything essentially starts from there. Um, if, if you don't have that, then it's going to ripple out into all sorts of bad things in your life. Very well said, man. I think that's a beautiful place to, to end the conversation for now. Uh, you have wonderful tips that really can help a lot of people, man, but you also have a beautiful mindset and approach that kind of spread across other categories of life that kind of you know touch a lot of human elements besides just your your focus of, of finance and so i love i love your approach man I, I really love what you're doing um can you point people in in your direction so that they can kind of find you where you're at and and also that they could sign up for your newsletter or your socials all of that stuff uh, yeah easiest place would be to just go on uh Twitter and I'm Lex underscore investing on Twitter. Um, and yeah, just like send me a DM, uh, follow whatever, you know, I'm just trying to be open and friendly to people. Uh, if you want to have a conversation about something or you're facing an issue, I just do, do my best to help people out as much as I can. Um, and from, from there, you'll probably see my website and some of the things that I'm doing. So they'll, they'll find plenty of other stuff there too. Uh, also on on YouTube, I'm doing on doing videos. Maybe maybe you'll find this podcast on there too. Um, on YouTube, I am also Lex underscore investing. Perfect. Thanks, man. I appreciate you coming on. That was this was a really fun conversation. Thanks again.